And now, back to corrections. Oh, oh excuse gosh. me, I, I'm, I'm sorry. so sorry. Oh. And let me help you with that. Thanks. I'm so clumsy and disorganized. You weren't in that lecture of yours. Were you there? I was so nervous. Yes, I was. In fact, I arranged it. You look familiar. My name is Sean Patterson. It's nice to see you again, Officer Mark. Sean P. You look so different in a suit. All the credit goes to my wife. She's responsible for this makeover. Do you have a moment? I want to discuss some things with you. Sure. Let's sit over here. My feet are killing me. What can I do for you, Mr. Patterson? Other than another lecture, which is something I don't care to do again. You were a natural. I was impressed. As well as my partners, we hope to convince you to accept a position in our nonprofit organization you might find interesting. A job? Are you serious? Yes, I am. I told them about the work you've done at United, the change you pushed for, and your tenacity in making things happen. We need someone with your experience and passion. What type of organization is this? While in prison, I saw all the health problems guys were dealing with, and like you, I wanted to do something. Uh -huh. So I talked to my lawyers about an idea to start a non-profit organization that will be able to get into prisons, jails, juvenile and reform centers, even foster homes, to make sure that good health care is being given and that it continues after release so they can get medical insurance and find the right clinics and programs for their health needs. That'd be great. I'd really like to be involved in that. I thought you would. But it will have to be full time and your salary will be lower than you're making now with fewer benefits as well. That will change once we get established. Lower salary, less benefits. I'm a single mom with a daughter to raise. This is going to take some serious thought. Do me a favor. Think with your heart as well as your brain. Okay, Mr. Patterson. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Hey, don't even think about missing the next episode of Corrections. You might regret it if you do. Hold up, Officer Croft. Hello, Sergeant Hope. What can I do for you? This is Peril and Kurt, contract COs from Second Chance Correction and they'll be working segregation with you. Men, this is Officer Croft, and the inmate in cuffs is Mr. Henderson. Keep your eye on them, hotheads. Okay, gentlemen, come with me. Inmate, get back in the barbershop, lockdown. 8913, they're going to stage, break. Yeah, I need that mixing and chill, man. I, got, I need a haircut. I'm gonna use this blade to get Jimmy Henderson when they walk by. Skillet, man, look here, don't do it. Grow up, man. Whoa, wait a minute. Give me back my blade. Stay out of my business. I'll show them how to stab somebody anyway. I don't care about sick, right up our ass with them. Hey, my man. Hey, inmate, wait. Call oh, Red, all the way here by the barbershop. Stop, stop. Look at that head, wow. They're not moving. Hard to imagine a person surviving that. What happened? He came out of the barbershop. As I called the code, Officer Pearl and Curtin reacted. I heard the sound of, Officer Curtin, Officer Pearl, let me see your batons. Call the warden and notify I and I Institution Investigations. Also get the camera. Has anybody called for a doctor or nurse? Look, Sarge, how they get in here with these? Yeah, good question, because we don't use metal batons here. They're illegal. And you see why. And I'm not going to write this report up. Two dead and one in handcuffs. Wait, oh. looks like that one is alive. Oh. Engine 7 2, medic 7, medical letter information. Oh, your mom died? You telling me that sweet little lady that visits you every month is gone? Yeah, man. She gone. She was all I had. <sighs> My little bro, man. I can't believe it. I just talked to him a few days ago, man. He wasn't hearing nothing. I was telling him about them streets, gun. Ron, last time I talked to my mom, she was telling me about purpose. <laughs> purpose? Yeah, purpose. 
She was one of them Christian women that believed God created us all with a purpose. Gun, man, no disrespect. How could I have a purpose when I can't even stop my own brother from getting killed? What happened, Ron? I mean, with your bro? You know how it is in them streets. People talk, but they don't know what they're talking about. First, the word was my brother tried robbing a drug dealer. Then they said it was about some girl. Now they tell me it was his partner. His partner? Yeah. He went to school together, played ball together, slept in my brother's room when he had nowhere to go. Man, that's trifling. There's no loyalty in the hood no more. <laughs> that's what I was telling him a few days ago. But the truth is, Gun, it's not about loyalty. Drug addiction is at an all-time high out there, especially with the young black dudes. They getting high just to escape reality and pain. Pain? See, Gun, it's like this. You have been gone for a minute. The youngsters coming up are feeling the consequences of poverty. They know they got to escape that environment, but they don't know how to, man. There's no mentors. They lost. Looks like all the daddies must be in prison. Good old war on drugs. <laughs> Back to what happened to my little bro. His partner's a junkie. He burglarized my mom's house. My bro confronted him and he shot my brother in the chest five times. Man, that's jacked up. <laughs> yeah, when I catch that fool... He gone, man. I got some of my gang on it now. What the police say? The who? The what? Man, them fools don't care. They see my bro as a little thug. That's one less they got to worry about. Dude told the police he killed my brother in self-defense. Self-defense? He shot your bro five times in the chest. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I'm going to take care of it, though. If we don't get him... We'll find somebody close to. No, no, no. That's not how this is taken care of. What you mean? He took something from me? So I'm about to take something from him. What if somebody took your little sister's life for something you did? Who? Nina? She's an angel. Nina ain't never hurt nobody. My point exactly. What do I need to do, man? You see, that's what my mom used to talk to me about. She was worried about the youth. The broken homes, the drugs in the community, the violence. She was actually scared of the youth. Yo, mom? Man, she was scared of black kids, bro. I thought she was marching with King back in the day. She was, and that's why it hurt her so bad. Those folks sacrificed for these kids to have better lives. The thing that hurt her the most was feeling that, feeling what she felt about the youth. Is that why you hate us, Gun? Nah, man, I don't hate y'all. I used to fight y'all because y'all had so much pent-up frustration. And everybody else was scared to fight. I knew y'all needed to have that negative energy out. So I made it my job. I mean, a few bruises were here, but, you know, you can't get a life back. Now I'm old. I got diabetes. I can't afford to bump some bruises like I used to. Getting scratched to cut can be life or death for me. So I need somebody younger. Not to fight the new guys, but to help get their negative energy out in a better way, you know, more constructive. Somebody respected, like you, Ron. <laughs> Man, I never thought I'd say this. Gun, you all right. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Look, man, I mean that. I appreciate what you did for me. You were strong for me while I was weak. You could have took advantage of me and my situation, but you didn't. That's it, Ron. We need each other. You remember Sean P? Talk about dude just got out, your cellmate. The one always talking politics and stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's him. <laughs> what about him? He was always talking about what he want to do when he get out of here. Well, now he's out, and he's working on his organization. He want to try to make changes to help guys like us on the inside and after we get out. <laughs> Good luck to him. Yeah, I feel the same way. He got me thinking about my mom and what she always said about men and purpose. I think I'm going to get with him. I'm tired of witnessing the suffering. If you get down with this... And I'm down with you. you got to do what we got to do in here. I mean, we are still in prison. I thought about that. We can work with the men in here. Let's help them get ready before they re-enter society. I'm going to get with Sean P and see what he think about this. What you think about this, Ron? Yeah, I'm feeling that, Gun. Maybe I can honor my brother with this. And we need to keep you healthy in here, cuz. It's a lot of work for us to do.
Directions is dedicated to the memory of Mr. Chalmers Wright. Thank you to the employees at the William E. Donaldson Correctional Facility and to the Alabama Department of Corrections. Thanks also to those who generously supported the making of this program through donations to the UAB crowdfunding site. These are the actors that performed this drama in their order of appearance. Officer Brandon was played by Ronald McKeithen. Dr. Jonas, Nia Carter, and Mrs. Carter were played by Ashley Conaway. Officer Dorothy Martin was played by Connie Kohler. Johnny Gunn was played by Hassani Jennings. Jimmy Henderson was played by Christian Spanks. Ron Carter was played by Mark Giles. Charles McCracken was played by Johnny Mac Young. Mrs. Day was played by Contenta Moore. Sean Patterson was played by James Rogers. Dr. Hernandez was played by Stacy Manning. Officer Crawford was played by Curtis Henderson. The Warden was played by James Head. Officer Nichols and Sergeant Hope played by Greg Wynn. Skillet played by Demetrius Huckleby. Understudies and extras, Jeffrey Williams, Michael Thomas, Cornelius Bridges, Derek Singleton, and Calvin Ford. And I am Destry McKinney, your announcer. Corrections was written by the inmates at Donaldson Correctional Facility under the guidance of Lee Shackelford. It was performed by the inmates under the direction of Dennis McLearner. Both are at the University of Alabama at Birmingham Department of Theater. Production assistants were Caroline Dorena, Ashley Conaway, along with James Head, sound engineer. Corrections is brought to you by the UAB School of Public Health and PCI Media Impact and executive producer, Dr. Connie Kohler. Lead producers include Dr. Janet Bronstein, Dr. Elizabeth Delzell, Dr. Yoko Kawamura, and Robin Parencio. Producers include Angela Ballman, Sheila and Clarence Blair, Elizabeth Hunter, Maggie Lerner, Dr. Chuck and Katie Mann, Mona McCarty, Gerilyn Powell, Dr. Arvind Singal, and Paul Wolf. Many thanks to the generous supporters of this program.